Hi and welcome to the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast for athletes, coaches and professionals who want to achieve their goals faster. I'm David Charlton and I'll be sharing proven methods from leading athletes, coaches and experts that will help you get the most from your talent. Today's show is sponsored by Functional Intelligent Training, who are a sports injury clinic located in Gosford, near Newcastle-upon-Tyne, and specialise in athlete development, nurturing future champions, strength and conditioning support, and excellent rehabilitation services. Welcome to episode 16 of Demystifying Mental Toughness. And today I'm going to be talking about learning orientation, which is a huge element of mental toughness. Let's face it, in sport, in work, in life, if you're going to have pressurised events, obstacles, setbacks in your path, then you need to be able to take a step back and learn, have more self-awareness in order to prosper and perform at your best. So we're going to look at exactly what learning orientation is. I'm going to reflect on some observations that I made from Carl Morris's episode. And also I'll be sharing some helpful resources which you can find in the show notes. So, what is learning orientation? Well, firstly, when you look at the mental toughness framework that I utilise in my work, it's a subset from challenge, which is one of the four C's. So someone who scores high in challenge is likely to cope effectively with most of life's changes. They're going to view problems, change, challenges as something that actually enhances their personal development. That type of person might also be attracted to environments, to different situations where there is actually a reasonable amount of change, risk and different challenges that take place. So environments which are unpredictable, I suppose, but at the same time do have an element of predictability. This type of person is going to be pretty good at reacting quickly to the unexpected. If we think of changing environments... Sports a great example. Certainly if you look at professional football at the high level, with the amount of pressure regarding performances, the amount of changes that take place with personnel, it's a continually changing, thriving environment. So someone who scores high in this element of challenge is going to be well suited to it. So back to learning orientation now. So like I mentioned, this is a a subset of challenge. So the likelihood is that this person is going to adapt reasonably well to unexpected changes and normal day-to-day changes. They're going to be aware that, yes, it's going to push them outside of their comfort zone. However, they're not going to be the type of person who walks away from such challenges. They're not going to worry too much about it. They're not going to be a moaner. I'm sure we've all come across them. I know certainly in my past life when I worked in corporate travel... I can remember we used to change computer systems. It seemed like every year there was always some upgrades and some personnel, some staff found that a real challenge, a real problem. And yet, boy, did they like to have a good old moan about it. In particular, though, when it comes down to learning orientation, someone who's got this in their personality is going to be very, very good at reviewing setbacks and failures. They're going to be able to extract the learning from these situations and they're going to be able to respond and make the relevant changes it's quite sad but certainly in in sport i see it time and time again and i'm sure it'll resonate with some of the listeners where people make the same mistakes week after week after week golf as a lot of the listeners know is a big part of my work working on a one-to-one basis with people and it's something I've been guilty of myself in the past. Often the the club golfer might have a bogey hole and they keep playing that bogey hole in the same way or they might just adapt their approach ever so slightly but they keep making the same mistake after mistake. Sometimes the elite golfer, and golf, let's face it, really does test you, tests every ounce of your mental characteristics. If you're not confident, if you're overconfident, If you can't control your emotions, if you can control your emotions, it really does test you. And sometimes you find with elite players, professional players, they've got this inner self-belief and confidence. They're pretty fearless, which is 
a great skill to have, let's face it. However, it can actually come to bite them as well, where they're too aggressive and they keep making the same mistakes time and time again because they're too aggressive and they don't necessarily have a plan B. They'll even be aggressive when they're not playing so well because they have this inner belief that it's going to come off for them. So question for you. Do you take the time to reflect on what you learn? Or do you respond impulsively? Are you reactive when things don't go your way? Do you get too emotionally involved? So that's the case. You really are going to get something from this short bite of mental toughness. So Carl Morris, in his episode, he talked about a great method, and that was simply observing your behaviours on the golf course. And he felt if golfers did that, just simply observe themselves, they would learn an awful lot about themselves, and then they would go on to play better golf. Sounds very, very simple, doesn't it? What I would say to that is, by doing that, it's going to increase your awareness of yourself. So I'll give you an example. I'm going to look at football now. So imagine it's the Champions League final, and there's a crowd in the stadium, so there's a lot of noise. The score's 1-1, and there's a penalty awarded to one of the teams in injury time. So yeah, there's a lot riding on the decision of the referee. On VAR, the penalty's awarded. The player who's going to take the penalty kick has got millions, billions of viewers watching on TVs, and has got 60, 70,000 fans in the stadium, some behind him, some hurling abuse at him. He knows the Champions League rests on his shoulders. The coach gets a message out to the player. Tell him to relax. Concentrate. So why would the coach say that to the person? Well, the coach knows it's a big, big situation in the game. And the coach knows that the player's unlikely to be relaxed. So they say those things. However, sometimes that can have a negative effect on a player. Sometimes it actually heaps more pressure when a coach intervenes and tells you how to go about your business. How often do you see that in youth sport when a parent tries to tell their child to act in such a way? It's really important when it comes down to improving performance that you as an individual and the coach as well should be aware of what does trigger you, should be aware of what you need to have a sense of control in different high pressure situations like taking the penalty kick. That's right, having that awareness is the first step towards taking control in real high-pressure situations. It allows the athlete to, to really dial in and check in with themselves, to understand their emotional state, to understand what they're thinking, their arousal levels, what it is that they need to focus on, what they prefer coaches to actually say to them. Our role as sports psychologists and for elite performance coaches is to help our athletes understand when they perform at their best, when they're too highly aroused or not aroused enough, and to help them focus on the right performance cues so that they can perform to their max under pressure. So getting back to what Carl Morris said, that is such a helpful thing for you. And if you want to take it to the next level, what you could do is have a little notebook alongside you. Make some little notes as you're walking down the 5th fairway, as you're walking down the 16th fairway onto the 17th tee. And if you don't want to take the notes, maybe you can talk to your caddy and get them to make some notes for you while you're just telling them what you're thinking. And it would be very, very helpful for you, especially if you looked at those thoughts in terms of past, present and future. You would really get to understand whether you do dwell on past mistakes or you get stuck in being critical over analyzing things in the past or whether you actually get ahead of yourself and you think a lot about two three shots ahead or the following hole or lifting the trophy or the score because as Carl said if you can stay grounded in the present moment then you're going to be really really dangerous and it can only be a fantastic thing to improve your performance. I talked there about observing yourself as a golfer However, what if you take part in another sport, perhaps motorsport, football, where you don't necessarily, or rugby, where you don't necessarily have the time like you do in golf to be able to make a few little notes in between shots. What you could do then is beforehand in the build up to a, a race or a game, 
You could make some notes about the sort of things that are going through your head, through your mind. It's going to get them out of your head. If there's any breaks in play, half time for argument's sake. Again, you could do that exercise. And then again, after the game, you could just make that part of your process, if you like. Which takes me on now to journaling. Journaling is a skill, and it's something I use in my work on a day-to-day basis. It's something pretty new to me. However, I've been receiving some high-level business support, and when I've dug deeper, very, very noticeable that the most successful people in business, in elite sport, in performance arts, take journaling very, very seriously. I'm very ambitious for my business and for my career, so I'm looking, like you, to take things up a notch to the next level. So why? Why would you journal? How is it going to help you? Well, firstly, it uncovers your thought habits, those habitual thought patterns that take place. You begin to become more aware of different ideas, thoughts, feelings that come into your mind throughout the day. You begin to recognise how much reality you actually place from your thoughts and then how it goes to impact your sense of identity. And knowing what the most common thoughts are that you are having on a regular basis really leaves you in a position of strength because you can then go on to decide whether they're actually working for you, whether they're helping you feel good in yourself, whether they're impacting on your performance in a positive or negative way, whether they're sabotaging your performance or your self-esteem. It's so, so important. And how many thoughts do you actually think you have on a day-to-day basis? I bet you haven't even considered that before. 1,000? 2,000? 3,000? Not at all. That's miles away. Scientists believe that we'll have about 60,000 individual thoughts per day. Yep, our brains are pretty clogged up with lots and lots of thoughts. And 95% of those thoughts, neuroscience researchers believe, are repetitive thoughts. Things that you think time and time again, that you repeat over and over, and that you're not aware of whatsoever. So getting back to the whole thing about learning orientation... If you're one of those people who does repeat the same mistakes time and time again and you feel like you're not getting any better, this is an exercise for you. Let's think about it. You have a shower in the morning, yeah? Or a bath. I hope you do. You don't really think about how you're going to wash your hair or clean your body. You completely switch off and it's a habitual process, isn't it? You're an autopilot. But actually, what are you thinking about when you're having that shower? Are you thinking about your day? Are you worrying about how much you need to get done? Are you thinking about the past and a mistake you made or some arguments that you've had? What's also really, really important to understand is that 80% of our thoughts are believed to be negative as well. So these thoughts are ingrained from childhood, which again, we just repeat time and time again over and over, day in, day out, and they go on to have such a huge impact on our day-to-day lives and explain why often we hit performance plateaus and we don't get any better. So yeah, if you want to get better, journaling is the way forward. Notice the patterns that you get stuck in on a day-to-day basis, so then you can choose how to think going forward, and you're not going to be held at the mercy of of old, outdated patterns of thinking. You'll be in charge of your mind, your mindset. It's going to help you take your performances to the next level and build a growth mindset, a can-do attitude. So I'm going to challenge you simply for a week. I'd like you to journal your thoughts. Do it on a daily basis, from morning through the day to night, when you're practicing, before you're performing, even during your performing if you can, at work, if you're not a professional athlete. I really challenge you to give it a go. And if you can journal and make them about three pages long, then there's going to be no stopping you. Make it a part of your daily routine. It's so, so important. And when you do it, and for those people who are action takers, begin to notice this whole thing about being in the past, the present, and the future. And really check your thinking. Check if it's helpful thinking or unhelpful thinking. In the show notes, I'm leaving some examples of of some of my recent journals and what I've done. And they'll be musings from my day-to-day work to thoughts about performances when I've been on the golf course to thoughts about when I've been watching a football match. Or most recently, I was watching last night Andy Murray in the US Open and his amazing comeback. Things I was thinking at the time. So yeah, give it a go. And feel free to feed back to me how it went for the week, what you learned about yourself, what patterns that you fall into, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to help you as a person 
in your life as well as you, the performer, the business professional, the athlete. So until next time, have a fantastic week. I'd like to give a big thanks to today's sponsors. Functional Intelligent Training, who are a sports injury clinic located in Gosforth, near Newcastle-upon-Tyne, and specialise in athlete development, nurturing future champions, strength and conditioning support, and excellent rehabilitation services. Thank you for listening to Demystifying Mental Toughness today. To sign up for tips and advice to help you be the best that you can be, go to wwwsport excellence.co.uk and sign up to the Mental Edge newsletter.